Good afternoon, everybody. We'll start in just a few minutes. We have a few more people joining our, our webinar this afternoon. We'll start momentarily. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I am Father Bennett, and we welcome you to us to our second uh, uh, Advent session, uh, Voices of Advent, a virtual retreat. Today, we'll be looking at Saint Joseph, the silent servant, Joseph, the son of David. It's great that you're with us this afternoon, and let us begin with a prayer. We'll begin with the Angelus. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Forth, forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, welcome to our second installation of our uh, Advent uh, series. Today, we're going to be looking at the message and meaning of St. Joseph. And let us begin by listening to the Gospel of St. Matthew. When the Magi had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you. Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. Joseph rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. He stayed there until the death of Herod. That was that what the Lord had said to the prophet might be fulfilled. Out of Egypt, I have called my son. When Herod had died, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Rise. Take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the child's life are dead. He rose, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go back there. And because he had been warned in a dream, he departed for the region of Galilee. He went and dwelt in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken to the prophet might be fulfilled. He shall be called a Nazarene. Our Advent retreat continues today as we reflect on the person and message of St. Joseph. You may think it strange that as our Advent series is entitled, Voices of Advent, the person we will consider today never has a word spoken recorded in all of sacred scripture. I'm sure that in the home of Mary and Joseph, in the home of Mary and Jesus, Joseph spoke the words of a loving father and husband. But no great speeches, 
no inspiring canticles, no pithy phrases are attributed to him. When we reflect on the events of salvation history, we should not be surprised that God chose the silent Joseph to protect, nourish, guide, and love the word made flesh. In the Gospel of John, which we'll read on Christmas morning, we hear, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through him, and without him nothing came to be. What came to life through him was light, and this light was the light of the human race. It is against this backdrop that the words of the Book of Wisdom take on new meaning, life, and significance. While gentle silence enveloped all things, your all-powerful word leaped down from heaven. In the moment of greatest silence, God spoke most eloquently. The silence of Joseph confirms what St. Augustine wrote. To the extent that the word made flesh grows in us, words diminish. To the extent that Jesus grows in us, the need for words diminish. This silence opens up in us a space that can be filled by the presence of the word, by the presence of Jesus. Silence prepares our hearts, our minds, and our spirits, our imagination to welcome Christ. Silence makes room for Christ. It makes room for others. Silence is a posture that opens us to the possibility of God breaking into our reality and speaking his word anew. In order to hear the word God wants us to hear in this moment, at this time, today, we have to be quiet, still and reflective in mind, body, and spirit to receive the word, to ponder the word in the silence of our own hearts, and then to respond to the word by loving, in charity, and kindness, and gentleness. This is a silence that brings about great interiority. Commenting on this, St. John of the Cross wrote, The Father spoke a word, and it was his Son. And it always speaks in eternal silence. And in silence, it must be heard by our soul. The Venezuelan conductor of the Los Angeles Philharmonic Gustavo Dudamel insists that the silence of the audience is an essential part of an orchestral performance. It is not nothing. It adds something that is missing when the orchestra rehearses in an empty auditorium. When conducting, he often reduces the volume so that those listening must strain to catch the music. The silence almost becomes audible. The audience is spellbound. This is not the silence of a stone, but the silence indicative of concentration, intensity, and depth. Should not our silence, a silence ready and eager to welcome the word, should not our silence, the silence of concentration, intensity, and depth. This is the posture of silence, and contemplation is its fruit. We live in a noisy world, a world of frenetic activity. This season of Advent invites us to slow down, 
and enter into the mystery of silence and thus into the presence of God. Recall that wonderful encounter of God with Elijah. God was not in the fire or the earthquake, but in the silent whispering of the wind. So far, we have considered the positive aspects of silence. But silence can also be negative and death dealing. Have you ever given or been the recipient of the silent treatment? Silence is, silence is never meant to punish or exclude, alienate or ignore. That type of silence is the very antithesis of the silence of God. Father Charles Cummings, a Cistercian monk, describes this type of silence as a closure, a shutting, a, sh a selfish sh shutting off the world, a withdrawal behind closed doors posted with a do not disturb sign. This type of silence creates an atmosphere of unavailability and unapproachability. Pope Francis has written, it is a well-established fact as the book of Sirach reminds us, many have fallen by the edge of the sword, but not so many as have fallen because of the tongue. Jesus said this clearly. Whoever speaks ill of his brother or sister, whoever slanders his neighbor is a murderer, killing with the tongue. We do not believe this, but it is the truth. Let us think a little about the times we have killed with our tongue. In the silent night of Christmas, God became approachable. Our God chose to be born in a stable, in Bethlehem, in the middle of the night, welcomed first by shepherds and field hands. God came as a child. Is there anything really more innocent or non-threatening than a child? God wants to be in relationship with us. So he chose to come among us, to walk among us, to feel our joys and our sorrows, to live our life, to die our death. To know this presence deeply is to, is to feel this presence intensely so that we can feel this presence. Our lives have to have room and space for God. The cultivation of silence creates the space needed for the Holy Spirit to come and dwell in each of us. We don't want to be so busy, noisy, or distracted, or aloof as to say, there is no room for God in the inn of our hearts. God will keep knocking, but silence allows us to hear the knock because sometimes God knocks gently. It allows us to hear the knock, to open the door. And by opening the door and welcoming God, we combine both the silence and action of Joseph, the silent servant the son of David. In the words of Pope Benedict XVI, let's allow ourselves to be infected by the silence of Joseph. Silence is so lacking in this world, which is often too noisy, which is not favorable to recollection and listening to the voice of God. In this time of preparation for Christmas, let us cultivate interior recollection so as to receive 
and keep Jesus in our lives. As our time comes to an end this afternoon, I'd just like to offer a few questions for your reflection and prayer. In his apostolic exhortation, guardian of the Redeemer, Pope St. John Paul II wrote, St. Joseph's silence is an expression of interior emptiness, but on the contrary, of the fullness of faith that he carried in his heart and that guided his every thought and deed. Some questions to consider. How can you incorporate silence into your daily routine? Does silence and contemplation have value for you? Why? Why not? Have you ever considered a silent or social media free Sunday? Again, why or why not? And finally, how do you make space for God in your life? I hope you can take one of the takeaways is because of silence, an interior silence, we have created a space for God to come and dwell. And let us conclude with our Advent prayer, a prayer by Henry Nowen. Lord Jesus, master of both light and darkness, send your Holy Spirit upon our preparations for Christmas. We who have so much to do and seek quiet spaces to hear your voice each day. We who are anxious over many things, look forward to your coming among us. We who are blessed in so many ways, long for the complete joy of your kingdom. We whose hearts are heavy, seek the joy of your presence. We are your people, walking in darkness, yet seeking the light. To you we say, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Next week, we will conclude our three-part series by reflecting on the Mother of God, Mary of Nazareth. Until then, be assured of my prayers and the prayers of the Benedictine community. May God hold you in the palm of his hand. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Until next week, go in peace.